Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is continuing the series on the Deep Blue Garry Kasparov matches. And we're looking at the first match and this is now game three of the 1996 match with Deep Blue White and Kasparov Black with the score poised at one each after two thrilling wins. Um, this game was slightly less thrilling though also interesting in some ways. Uh, let's have a look how it went. So it was e4, c5 and c3 and um, yeah the deep blue uh, uh, team had decided to uh, stay with uh, with 2c3. I mean obviously the uh, uh, game one had brought a win which was uh, great but the opening hadn't been fantastic. Um, actually um, it, it sounds just like human preparation. They were wondering for ages and ages and ages what should we play having all sorts of uh, nightmares and worries about it and then in the end uh, apparently Joe Benjamin had a had a brilliant idea and uh, they decided to go with that but um, maybe it didn't quite work out uh, perfectly there so Gary repeated the same line d4 knight f6 knight f3 bishop g4 bishop e2 e6 castles knight c6 bishop e3 takes takes and bishop b4 and actually yeah I mean it's uh, almost the same line but not quite, because uh, uh, in this game, um, um, actually, h3 hasn't been played. So this was already uh, a slight wrinkle uh, um, in the game there. So h3 not played, uh, so leaving the bishop on g4, where it might be loose or it might be hanging in a couple of lines. You can imagine that Gary must have felt just a little bit uh, yeah, puzzled, nervous about it, because, uh, yeah, what on earth would, uh, would, would the machine have prepared? So a3 played, bishop a5, knight c3. And Gary returns to uh, to d6 here. And now, um, well, yeah, you know, h3, uh, bishop h5, knight b5 would be game one. Um, but here, uh, the uh, uh, the deep blue team had prepared knight e5. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, funnily enough, um, the engines think that black's already uh, um, a little bit better after this. Um, they don't like white's position at all. Um, yeah, it was uh, um, apparently when going through some lines, um, yeah, deep blue, they'd managed to get deep blue enthusiastic about um, some sort of things. And uh, Joel had an idea, but it turns out not to be a particularly good one. Um, and actually, in, in a very simple way, Gary just gets a very nice position as black. So bishop takes c2, queen takes c2, bishop takes c3. Um, not absolutely necessary, but you can imagine that uh, the Gary was uh, not keen on getting hit by uh, by knight c4 again. So uh, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and knight e5. And now bishop f4. This is the uh, the key idea. Just um, um, just looking to um, uh, to recapture with the uh, with a bishop on e5 here, and uh, well, you know, I mean, um, um, this would would have been a possibility, something like queen c6, and then we go bishop b5, knight d7, bishop f4, castles, and maybe c4. You know, not um, not necessarily so bad for um, for white, the sort of position that uh, the deep blue could uh, could play maybe. Um, but Gary played it uh, quite nice and strongly. He played knight f3 check takes and queen d5 which is uh, yeah just getting this sort of thing but an awful lot quicker you know for the exchange of queens at the same time and after queen d3 then rook c8 just pre uh, preventing um, um, c3 to c4 now apparently joel was really wanting um, um, deep blue to go bishop e5 but deep blue didn't like it um, and um, yeah, kind of rightly so, I suppose, because uh, yeah, simply knight d7 is possible here. Um, what's the problem? Well, if you take on g7, I just go rook g8, queen h7, and knight f6. If takes, then uh, queen takes g2. Um, so, um, yeah, and if you go queen h6, I go uh, knight h5. And, uh, well, the bishop can't move because of a mate on g2, and otherwise you're just going to pick up a piece. So that would have been absolutely catastrophic, really. Um, I mean, after knight d7, you could still go back to f4, but obviously it's not super, you know, it's not quite what you want to do there. So actually, um, um, d blue actually kind of improved on that. Um, I mean, the engines want to play this move rook b1, b6, and then rook b4, and just uh, force through c4 anyway, which is, uh, you know, decent and, uh, and sensible. Um, what deep blue did was play uh, rook fc1 and um, actually after queen c4 
Um, yeah, queen c4. I mean, rook c4 is also possible just to uh, to block c3 to c4. Um, but then one idea that white might have is just to go uh, bishop d6 here, stopping the black king from castling because queen d6 allows queen c4. So that might be a little bit uh, irritating. Um, so queen c4 was played by Gary and now queen c4, rook c4. And uh, well, I mean, the uh, all the human uh, commentators were getting very excited uh, at this because obviously, you know, this position for white has the seeds of disaster. Give black a couple of moves, king d7, rook c8, knight d5 and uh, it's just a total win but um yeah i mean deep blue showed i think you know something that um well sort of became uh, a key characteristic of uh, of engines it probably already was you know for engines of that time the ability to defend unbelievably but i mean here deep blue just took it against gary to uh, to another level um i mean actually the, the engines are defending with pretty much any move here um but uh, deep blue's way of playing it was very nice played rook cb1 just getting out of the way of any um, uh, knight d5, rook c3, so um, and keeping this rook defending this a pawn. Uh, b6 and then bishop b8. So um, attacking this pawn on a7. So um, um, Gary's got to go rook um, rook to a4, and then deep blue comes up with a very nice way here of uh, of uh, defending its um, its backward c pawn. It goes rook b4. Uh, you see what the the nice value is of having the rook defending the pawn on a3 um, and after rook a5 it played the move rook c4 so uh, just a very nice way of covering that uh, that backward pawn by getting the rook in front of it very very unusual and very nice indeed so um castles was played by um by gary um yeah i don't know i mean king e7 sort of feels a little bit more natural to have the um, um the king close to the center there but uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make so much difference. Uh, Gary played castles, bishop d6, and then rook a8. So defending the pawn and getting ready to, to move the rook over. But now rook c6. Again, there's, there's many ways of, uh, of drawing this, but this one's quite nice. Keeping the rook nice and, uh, and active, preparing moves like c4 and bishop b4, and then a4 to a5. You know, just uh, it's really nice endgame play, really specific play. The only sad thing, of course, is that this is a white for, uh, for deep blue, and it's just, you know, doing some very good play in order to hold a draw. You know, whereas, uh, yeah, it would have been nice if you could have used this for, um, uh, yeah, to try and make a win somehow. But um, yeah, b5 was played, king f1, um, rook a4, and uh, rook b1, king e2 is also fine. But I mean, we're, we're you know we're we're not really in a in any sort of position where um, where this is uh, where deep blue is going to be in any trouble. Um, just good idea to bring the king into the center there. Just defend that c3 pawn. Now the uh, the rook is a little bit freer as well, and you're also covering some light squares like uh, like e4. Rook d8, uh, bishop e7, rook d7, and here deep blue took the opportunity to um, uh, just to uh, uh, exchange off the uh, the knight. So that's uh, a key piece that might have been used to exploit some of these weak light squares. Exchanged. Uh, the rook covers. Obviously, this rook's a bit passive, but on the other hand, this rook is kind of passive too, you know, because uh, you're defending here. So um, king g7 was played, king e3, just getting out of the way of e5 e5 played g3 takes and takes and uh, yeah i mean you don't have to worry if uh, this pawn goes we just take one of these really we'll be able to take one of these so um you know not um not a particular worry there so rook e7 check played king f3 again you can just leave this pawn loose because if you take that one then i take on uh, on a6 rook d7 rook d3 takes takes rook takes rook c4 king g2 and uh, well, the game was uh, was drawn very soon after. Just show the last few moves there. A4 takes rook h5, a3, king g2. Um, you could have just taken that pawn a3, but uh, Gary just uh, offered a draw, I think, in this position, and uh, they agreed a draw. So um, what did uh, Gary say about this? Made just an interesting comment. Uh, precision under fire is another aspect of human versus machine asymmetry. He was talking about uh, the fact that uh, you know even if deep blue was sort of equivalent to his strength it would be a very different range of skills to uh, to Gary's even if they averaged out at, uh, at 2800 2850 um, so what we call a sharp position in chess is where there's high complexity and grave consequences for any error you know both players are balancing on a tightrope and the first slip can be fatal 
And for a computer, this makes it easier to find the right path because all the other moves return a very low score, whereas humans can never enjoy such confidence and only the human player is aware that there's a tightrope. I can sense danger in a position, feel the tree of variations growing exponentially, and that's just another day at the beach for a machine. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was quite a, quite a nice, uh, interesting comment there. And uh, yeah, I mean, Gary was uh, was uh, did a you know a pretty good job out of the opening. Couldn't have done much better. But Deep Blue held it um, you know very nicely with again very nice uh, um, um, unusual play you know and uh, this Rook C B one Bishop B eight very precise sequence just to uh, to shield its um, its weak pawns from uh, from Black's pieces and uh, and easily make a draw. So in a way, you know, a bit of a wasted white really for Deep Blue, but uh, again, you know, good indication that um, it was absolutely no pushover at all, and Gary was going to find it very tough to uh, to uh, to get anything out of this match. And of course, you know, as the first game showed, had to be unbelievably careful as well if he ever got worse. So there we are. That was game three. Stay tuned for the next video on game four.